So mm -hmm. I'd love to hear from you. Why do you love the Psalms so much? Yeah, well, one is that we have so many of these theological themes. Mm -hmm. So we have creation and mm. just beautifully portrayed Psalm 74, 104 is one of mm -hmm. my favorites where um, God created all things, but he sustains all things yeah. and the animals. And um, we have Psalm 8 uh, describing the image of God yeah. and the dignity and the role and the care and love that God gives humanity. And the psalmist is just in awe of it yeah. you know he's not just telling us about it like it's a systematic theology textbook he's yeah. really in awe and captured by this um you know we have sin yeah. and repentance sacrifice um psalm 51 yeah. david pouring out his heart after his sin against Bathsheba and Uriah yeah. and he's um and he's saying you know first I have to repent and then I can sacrifice to you yeah it really gives us a, a theology of the place of sacrifice within their worship system that's right yeah and I think sometimes as Christians we really struggle I'm going to have a podcast why I love Leviticus and talk about oh, sacrifice good. that's coming up but yeah. um the, the idea of we sometimes look at these rituals that are described in the text and we assume kind of that discussion we've had in the church ex opere operata that they kind of just self you know they operate out of themselves mm -hmm. and that these were kind of blind worshipers just doing acts mm -hmm. of ritual but what we see in the old testament is that sacrifices are gifts you're bringing to god mm -hmm. sometimes making reparation and restitution but you can't commune with the holy god if you're in a place of injustice or unholiness you got to make that right first yes. your heart has to be right, right yeah. to receive the sacrifice so when sacrifice is spiritualized for lack of a better term and that language is used it's a very natural connection because you're talking about the state that the worshiper should be in mm -hmm. when they're bringing a tangible gift to god's palace to mm -hmm. offer it to the king so yeah i love that uh, that connection that's really good yeah and psalms that's really, really you know displays that so clearly and well yeah um and then we have um just so much other we have you know salvation we have um covenant we have the yeah. history of israel yeah psalm 78 and yeah. yeah these long yeah i tell my students that's like the cliff notes version of of israel's of the history story. there yeah. yeah of the story yeah, yeah. and then it, it makes sense too like if you look at places in the new testament just to make the connection they're telling the story of Israel in various ways. But mm -hmm. but that that act of recapitulating that story is so central to Israel early Jewish identity. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, can we come back to the theme of creation? Because I really I want to just park it there just for a moment. I always like to remind my students that a lot of the the Bible, the Old Testament's reflection on creation isn't in Genesis. Mm, right. Right. So there's a lot of creation theology mm -hmm. in particular in the Psalms and mm -hmm. in Isaiah. And while Genesis has is doing its thing, it kind of shaping creation in a certain way. A lot of the more direct engagement with the cultural environment of ancient Israel mm -hmm. comes in the Psalms in the way that the creation story is told mm -hmm. and also in the way that the creation story is directly linked with the Exodus, which is mm. God's creation of the covenant people yes and they they're drawing on um like cosmic stories that are present in their environment like mm -hmm. slaying of the dragon splitting the waters you know yes. doing all that kind uh -huh. of stuff so do you have any thoughts on the kind of creation theology of yeah of the psalms I, well i think yeah we just can't stay in genesis 1 and 2 because we get so much of a fuller picture elsewhere in scripture right. uh, you mentioned slaying the uh, leviathan yeah. i think of psalm 74 where yeah. it almost depicts god playing with him uh, yes, you, know? <laughs> you have the, yeah, he becomes a play toy right. rather than an adversary. Right, yeah. because God is so sovereign. He yeah. is so much more powerful than these other so-called creator deities that yeah. he can play with these yeah. so-called monsters of chaos, yeah. right? Yeah. So the Bible is taking these images and these other creation myths and really filling you know, taking that space and saying, no, this is Yahweh. He's the real creator yeah. God. And this is the kind of creator God he is. Yeah. And he's created a good creation that you can learn from. Yeah. So Psalm 19, he takes care of his creation. Yeah. Psalm 104. Yeah. Um, I love that. Yeah. The Also, so the aspect of the sustaining of creation, I think is so important for us today. I, I'm thinking in particular of um, all the recent discussion of revival. And mm. the excitement that we have as believers to see um, like kind of a fresh manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I think for some people, though, it may be the extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And part of that may even come down to the kind of post-enlightenment split between the, 
the mundane or secular and the supernatural. And mm -hmm. so we're kind of always looking for the supernatural. Yeah. But the it seems to me that the theology of God sustaining creation and, the, and that in the Psalms really invites us to see the mundane as supernatural. Right. So really to recognize all of life as an act of being in a wondrous place. The heavens declare the glory of God, right. right? So we are learning about God all around us. And we, as imagers of God, have been placed in a position to care for all of creation and, yeah. and to consider that a part of our you know, vocation. Yeah. 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 So when we think about maybe how the creation theology of the Psalms is shaping us, it's inviting us to recognize all aspects of our life as worship, um, to see the mundane is actually wondrous mm. and not maybe bifurcate or split mm. um, certain things from all of life, right? Yeah. Um.